Welcome to the iconic Griffith Observatory. This is one of my favorite places that I've visited in LA and it's one of the first places I bring friends and family when they come to visit as well. The Griffith Observatory is located in Griffith Park and was opened to the public in 1935. It's one of the most visited public observatories in the world. Inside the historic building behind me, there are all sorts of different exhibits for you to learn more about astronomy. And as you walk around the outside of the Griffith Observatory, you have beautiful views of LA, the Hollywood sign, and on clear days, even the ocean. The best part about all this is it's completely free to visit the Griffith Observatory. Although it's free to visit the observatory, you will have to pay for parking and it is a little bit hard to come by up here. I'll leave a link to the website for the observatory in the description and you can see a really nice map that shows you where it's easy to park. But no matter where you end up, you're probably going to have to walk quite a ways up hills, so be prepared for that. Griffith Observatory is one of the most popular attractions in Los Angeles. Griffith Park and the observatory were the vision of Griffith J. Griffith. The observatory opened in 1935 and was then renovated and expanded between 2002 and 2006. According to their website, there are about 1.6 million visitors to the observatory every year. First, let's discuss parking again. This clip was taken from where we found a parking spot on Western Canyon Road. You can see how small Griffith looks from here, and that's because we're about a mile away. Be prepared for parking along this road to cost around $10 to $15 per hour. There is also a lot right up next to the observatory, but it fills up pretty much immediately. I did find a less expensive option though, and I'm definitely going to remember it for next time. If there is no concert happening, you can park for free at the Greek Theater and walk up, which is also about a mile. Or you can park there for free and take the city bus up to the observatory for around 50 cents each way. Once you get to the grounds of the observatory, you can look to the right and get a glimpse of the Hollywood sign, and also sweeping views of the city. And then there's Griffith Observatory itself, with its iconic Art Deco architecture. There's plenty to see before you even step foot inside. And oh, saw a helicopter and had to film it, like the uh, Midwestern tourist I still am. This sculpture on the front lawn of the observatory is the Astronomer's Monument. It is approximately 35 feet high and features six of the most important astronomers in history. Another neat thing to see outside the observatory is the scale model of our solar system, which is made of bronze lines and plaques set in the sidewalk. You can find the sun right at the front steps of the observatory, and each foot in the model is equal to about 20 million miles. When you've seen the grounds and are ready to head inside the observatory, you are welcomed into the central rotunda by this beautiful mural first painted by Hugo Ballin in 1934. Beneath the mural is the pendulum, which has been there since the observatory opened in 1935. As each day goes by, the pendulum knocks over pegs as the earth rotates. To the right of the pendulum is the Amundsen Hall of the Sky. There are many exhibits showing how the sun and moon interact with earth. My favorite exhibit is the interactive periodic table, which shows how everything around us, including our own bodies, is made up of material that was once part of a star. The Ocean Planetarium has live shows throughout the day, but these do require a paid ticket. On the other side of the pendulum is the Wilder Hall of the Eye. The exhibits here focus on human observation of the sky and the tools we have developed to do so. A crowd favorite in this area is the Tesla coil. There are demonstrations of the Tesla coil done by the observatory staff roughly every hour. The demonstrations are free and last about six minutes. On the lower floor of the observatory, you can learn about the depths of space. There are exhibits about galaxies, stars, and our solar system. You can even find out how much you'd weigh on different planets, if you're into that.
And oh look, it's Einstein. Just outside the depths of space, on the lower level, there is the cafe at the end of the universe if you need a snack, and of course, a bookstore and gift shop if you'd like a souvenir. You can also walk around on the outside of the observatory building where you will find panoramic views of Los Angeles, and sometimes you can even see all the way to the ocean. On either side of the building, there are two domes. This is where you can find the telescopes. The Zeiss telescope offers free public viewing on days that the observatory is open and the sky is clear. According to their website, observing begins around 7 p.m. The other dome contains three solar telescopes, which bring the sun into the Amundsen Hall of the Sky. These operate during the day and can show sunspots and solar flares. Thank you so much for exploring the Griffith Observatory with me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more like this, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.